Hey, Stewart's Chapel, this is Don Pearson and Don Counts, and we're here at the church's office, and this is Wednesday, October the 13th devotion, and we're continuing our look at various aspects of prayer and in relationship to the scripture. Basically, I'm sharing with you um, just some of the conferences that I would do when I was with the convention, and this is achieving two purposes. Many times I've asked people, the people have asked me, you got any of that on tape? I will be able to say, yep, it's out there. The other thing is I can um, kind of educate, um, remind you and some of the people at Stewart's Chapel and others about the importance of prayer and God's people. I want us to turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I'm going to talk about one of the uh, elements of powerful prayer, and that is the faith, faith, F-A-I-T-H element, faith element of prayer. Look at um, verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Now, how do we, so, so without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So how is this a prayer truth or a prayer principle. Well, listen to what it says. For he, that is anyone, who comes to God, that would draw near to God, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently or consistently, persistently seek him. So, so he makes a declaration. God makes a declaration Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then he goes on and defines the kind of faith that, he, that God is looking for or the kind of faith that pleases God. So it's not enough for me to just say, well, I have faith. That must be pleased God. No. God says there's two elements to a pleasing faith that God is looking for. And the first one is they must believe that God is that, that's more than just believing that God exists. It means that He is. That is the one and only, the Almighty Lord, the Creator, the Sustainer, that He is God. It's not just believing that there is just a God or believing that there's only one God. It's believing that in this God, that this God, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, is the one and only God. But that's not enough either. You must believe that he is a rewarder of all the things in relationship to faith that God could have said, like he is holy, he is a God of wrath, he is a God of mercy, he is a God that is long-suffering, he is a God that is near. Of all the things that it could have talked about who God is, he singles out one thing, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'm telling you, the more I believe that he is a rewarder of me, the more I diligently seek him. There, oh man, there's so much here. And trying to do this in a devotion, I literally used to spend a couple hours just on this one scripture and this one principle about the faith. I want to take you over to Psalms and allow the Word of God to emphasize this truth about prayer. Now, I have found through the years, it doesn't, I could just basically open my Bible in the book of Psalms just about anywhere, and in almost every chapter I can find this truth. I've chosen or marked a few just for this time, Psalms 55, verse 16 and 17. Listen to Psalms 55, verse 16 and 17. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Listen to what he says. Evening and morning and at noon. Very different. What we would say morning, noon, and evening. There's a, there's a reason. This is very, it's very different than the way, way we would say it. Evening, morning, and at noon. That means I will start praying to him in the middle, at the evening. I will pray all night through the morning and all through noon. You understand? 
I might say to you, I, I start praying in the morning and I pray all day long. Well, this guy is saying I pray all night and all day. Well, that's not all. Evening and morning at noon, I will pray and cry aloud. And listen to what it says. And he, he shall hear my voice. Well, before I state the truth here, let me give you a few more examples from Psalms. Psalms 138, verse 3. In the day when I cried out, you answered me. Did you hear that? You answered me and made me bold with, my, with strength in my soul. When I cried out to you, you answered me. Psalms 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. Psalms 140, verses 1 through 4. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continue to gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. Psalms 141, verse 1 and 2. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The whole psalm, Psalm 142, I'm not going to read the whole thing, Psalms 143, verse 1, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication in your faithfulness. Answer me. Well, what's, why? Well, let me share with you what I have discovered in the Psalms. Almost every time in the Psalms when it starts talking about God answering, it's usually me. He answered me. He answered her. He answered them. It's not just their prayers that he answered. He answered the person. There's two kinds of people when it comes to prayer. Those who believe that God answers prayer and those who believe that God answers them. They're not the same. Hear me very carefully. I might say that God answers me. Well, let me back that up. I might say that God answers prayer, but that does not mean that I pray. I can tell everybody in the world about how God answers prayer, but that does not mean that I believe that He answers prayer my prayers over and over again in psalms and over and over again in scripture the challenge for our faith is to believe that he rewards those who seek him that he answers them god has no covenant or promise with a religious activity god's covenant or promise is with his people god responds to his people god expects for his people to have a faith that is pleasing to him, which means they believe that he will reward them. Now, I have found that there are a lot more people who believe that God answers prayer than there are those who believe that God answers them. I, uh, I often use the example of, of an individual who leaves a church service who is in a massive car accident they're fine but the other person in the car is in serious condition rushed to the hospital this person believes that God answers prayer but doesn't believe that God answers them for whatever reason 
they struggle with God answering them. They usually have a story. There may have been a time in their life when they asked God to do something and He didn't do it and they're convinced God doesn't answer their prayer. Maybe they believe that they're, they got some kind of sin or something in their life that prevents God from answering them. But for whatever reason, they stand. there's someone they love that stands in need of prayer and they're not able to do it. So what does that person do? Well, they call the pastor of the church they just left and they get the word out to everybody in their church. All of a sudden, they got everybody they can think of asking to pray. That doesn't mean that everybody is praying. It doesn't mean that they have the faith that is pleasing to God either because the odds are many of those people that they've just communicated to that church are just like him. They believe that God answers prayer. They just don't believe that God answers them. You see, this man has everybody doing his praying for him and he may never pray. But then there's the other person. This person really believes that God rewards him for seeking him. He believes that God answers him. He leaves church. He's in a serious car accident. Looks over at someone that he loves that is in serious condition. Immediately he begins to pray, asking God to intercede in this life of this person he, in, he is praying for. He goes to the hospital with the individual. He's still praying all the way. He gets an opportunity to contact his pastor. He, asks, he does the same thing that the other person did. He asked the pastor to get people praying, but there's a difference. This man is asking people to join him in praying, where the other man, the first man, is asking others to do his praying for him. Can't do that. You see, the faith that is pleasing to God is one that believes that God is and that God is a rewarder of the one who is seeking him. In other words, this person has a faith that believes that God answers him. I don't know what your story is. Do you believe that God answers you? Do you have a faith that is pleasing to Him? A faith that believes that He is the one and only Almighty God. But that one and only Almighty God, do you believe that that one will reward you for seeking Him? Love you, Stuart Chapel.